Guys, ladies, stop driving with your landing gear that far down on the interstate or the highway, even on in the city, if you're in the city. The reason being is if you hit a railroad track or a dip in the road, that there can cause your trailer to disconnect. Always roll the landing gear all the way up, okay? Don't never drive around town like that, even if you're a city driver, because I promise you, the roads change. Uh... The T dot could have came in and put some asphalt down, and you didn't know that night, that evening, you didn't know it. Come through there the next morning, cause you're so used to doing it. If you're that lazy, you can't get out and roll your landing gear up. You need to maybe look for another job. Okay, but this your boy Scoop. Got more to come. Good morning there, fellows, ladies, gentlemen. Uh, this your boy, Scoob, man. Uh, you know, we as drivers have got to stop doing certain things out here. Um, number one, uh, I'm guilty of it. I've done it sometime. Uh, but I realize that it is a problem. It's a, a driver see, driver do. And that's one thing you need to stop doing. And that is parking on the field loud and taking a 30-minute break. Don't do it, guys. Yeah, I've done it sometime, but I always get the last pump on the end down there and everything. After I get through fueling, if ain't nobody behind me, I'll run in, get me something to eat, something to drink, and use the restroom. And by then, that 30 minutes then zip by. We need to stop doing that, guys. Uh we need to stop riding up on each other's bump out here, man. I saw a guy yesterday coming across 20 in Louisiana. Uh, man, he was on his car so tough, man. B and R, R and B. Uh, on, his, on the car so tough, man, it's a crying shame, man. Uh, if that car had to hit his brake or saw a piece of rubber was laying in the road or something, ain't nowhere for that cat to go but in the median or else came over on me. He was tailgating the heck out that car, man. That's That's unacceptable. Um, trying to pass a truck when you're out here on the interstate, your truck runs 65, heels run 66. He trying to pass you or you trying to pass him. Be the professional. Bag out of it. Let him go and get over. Put your crews back on. Roll on and everything. That's just, I don't know, man. It's just unprofessional of us drivers, man. We do so much stuff out here that we know is wrong. Um, it's like we don't give a darn, man. It's all about me, 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 me. And as a professional driver, we have got to stop doing that, okay? Um, oh, man. Uh, refusing to get out and help a driver. Uh, you see a driver having trouble bagging in? Help the man. Come on, guys. Ladies, help him. You was in the same boat as that driver was when you first started driving. You were in the same boat. Uh, we're here at Monroe uh Monroe Warehouse uh finna get loaded and on Barge Barge Road. It's okay location. They got a gravel lot across the street. It's uh look like it's okay. The gate was open so I think you can pull in at night and park at the lot and stuff I believe. But uh let me go in and check in and your boy Scoob will be back. I'll flip the camera around right quick at uh the docks here. But uh I'm gonna go in, check in and everything and uh I'll be right back, okay? Hold on. Be back. All right, that's our day, you two. We, we done made it. We done got, went in to get checked in and everything. And uh, they said just sit back and wait. Uh, as you can see over here, 
those five doors right there. I can't go in door 11 right here. Right there, right there. I can't pull into that door there because those are made for uh, like FedEx trucks, UPS trucks, the delivery trucks and everything. So I gotta wait on these five doors right there to come open. There's one to come open, pull over and bag into it. So other than that, we just have to sit and wait. Uh, this here is where you would take yourself and put yourself in the sleeper. Uh, put yourself in the sleeper uh, to save your time, get you at least two hours, three hours sitting there at the customer. That's when your split log can come in. Uh, especially when you're just starting your 10 hour break. Like I'm just starting my 10. I took my 10 hour break. Now I just started my clock this morning. Uh, I was 10 minutes from the customer. So I showed uh, 10 minutes of drive time, 15 minutes pre-trip and got over here. I showed uh, 15 minutes to check in and now uh, put yourself in the sleeper. That way, uh, that time you can get your time in and everything. That's what you want to do. You want to get your time in as much as possible. Uh, so if you have to split log, you can split log. Now, only thing about split logging is if I'm here for three hours, okay, and then I start driving for, I drive for what I had left on my clock, which is eight hours, nine hours, and I shut down. All I have to do then is just take a seven hour break in the sleeper, straight in the sleeper, seven hours, can't interrupt it. And then I pick up that hour, I think it was like an hour and a half. Uh-oh, uh-oh, there go mama calling. I have to talk to y'all in a bit, hold on. All right there, YouTube, sorry about that, man. Uh, but mama call, your boy school gotta put y'all on hold. <laughs> First priority, that's mama, baby. When the missus called, I got to put y'all on hold. But anyway, uh, she said to tell each and every one of you all good morning and have a blessed uh, day and happy Valentine's Day from Mrs. Scooby-Doo to you all. Um, uh, give me Right now, let me give a quick shout out to uh, JJ. I saw met JJ over at the uh, Loves yesterday at uh, the Loves in, on Interstate 20, exit 124. And then I met... Uh, Stacy House, uh, great guy. Uh, I was getting ready to pull off if we was at the Dan's truck stop in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. So I met Stacy House over there to him and his family and wife. Uh, thank you all so much for watching my videos and everything. Uh, thank both of those guys for the acknowledgement. Thank you guys. I appreciate that. It means a lot to me that my videos uh, are helping uh, some helping guys out here, guys and ladies out here. So thank you so much for the acknowledgement. Um, oh man! Uh, but like I said, those guys, great guys, two great guys I met and everything. Once again, JJ, I met him at the Loves Station House. I met him at uh, in Hattiesburg at Dan's Truck Stop. Great truck stop, guys, ladies. If you got a delivery at the Sam's Club, uh, come on into Hattiesburg right there at 98 and 49 uh there's a truck stop called dan's truck stop great truck stop parking gets a little crazy in there but if the drivers would pull in there and park straight you can get trucks uh facing the restaurant and then the trucks bag up to them you could put like maybe 20 trucks right there in that area then you park along the side you got parking along the back and everything uh they got a couple of parking spaces beside the uh scale uh they got parking in front of the shop but if you're not going to be out of there before 7 a.m don't park in front of the shop because hey they're gonna wake you up okay so don't park there uh be careful parking there at night because i think they got a phone number you can call if you got a major repair you need and they will come out so they'll need that spot so one first thing, let me say this, but remember, Dan's Truck Stop at 98 and 49 in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Great truck stop, clean restrooms. Uh, the food is great. Oh, man, I ate a big breakfast there, man. It was delicious, delicious. Uh, so if you stop in the Dan's Truck Stop, tell them you saw Scooby-Doo. I told you about them and everything, okay? Dan's Truck Stop, Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Uh but man, oh man, I was so full as a tick, though. Full as a tick, tick tock. <laughs> but anyway, uh, uh, those are things that we have to stop doing as drivers. 
and everything. Uh, my experience out here don't make me no better than you that's just coming out of school. Uh, when you think, and if you think I'm lying, <clears throat> I'm gonna show you an example. Take your CDLs out of your pocket. I'm gonna take mine out of mine. Only difference on those CDLs is the state that you got them in, the city and the state, the picture, and the date of birth, and the driver's license number. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing going to be different on that. But if you look at the top, they said the same thing. Commercial driver's license and everything. No difference. Nobody would know how much experience you've got unless you open your mouth and tell them. Um, law enforcement. When I was on the law enforcement, nobody knew how much experience or how long I've been on it until they asked me. Now, I'm your trainer, though, no, because or when you're in briefing, you know, roll call. Yeah, you have to know who you are then, but <clears throat> other than that, they don't know how much experience you got out there on the, uh, as a law enforcement officer, just like they don't know how much experience you got out here on the road until you start panicking and making unprofessional mistakes. Uh, most accidents out here at young people, it happened when you start panicking. When you get yourself in a situation, boom, you panic. So what you doing? The adrenaline is going. You trying to get yourself out of this situation and not stopping to think that, hey, let me stop. Set the brakes. <sighs> Take a breather. Get out and assess the situation. Look at what you're bagging into. Look at your situation. I tell anybody when I was training, when you get to a customer, <clears throat> when you walk it in to check in, Pay attention to the docks. Pay attention to how, the, how things are on the lot that you're in. Size the lot up when you get there. That's the reason why I use Google Maps, just to blow the picture up to look at the lot, to see where I'm coming in at. Okay, if I come in this way, the docks are going to be on my left. So I can go down here, flip around. You know, if the docks is on my right, I can go down, flip around, and put the docks on my left. The driver's side. Try to bag in from the driver's side as much as possible. I know it's going to come some place sometime in some places where you can't help but the blind sight it in. That's just trucking. That is just trucking. But, hey, it is what it is and everything. But always pay attention when you're pulling into a customer and look at the situation that you're going to be in. It might be trucks. Like, I'm sitting out here in the middle of the lot. Hold on, that mama. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey, sorry about that. She uh, she called me when she get when I talked to her on the way to work, and then when she get to her job, get to her office, she calls me back and let me know she made it because she walked from the parking garage and stuff. But anyway, uh, that's what you got to do out here. Nobody out here in this trucking industry is better than the other person. We all make mistakes. We all make mistakes. When I first started driving back in 86, hey, I made mistakes. I done stuff that I wasn't paying attention. And the only reason being is because I panicked. I panicked. And when you panic, you start messing up people. Remember to remain calm. When you see yourself starting to panic, stop and take a breather. Please stop and take a breather. Most of these accidents out here happen because we panic. Incidents to my new new drivers. Once again, my new drivers, my old drivers, they 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 set where they're gonna be set. They done, they 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 set in their ways, so they don't they don't give a darn. Um get a CB radio. Get you a CB radio. Please get you one. Please get a CB radio, guys. I know you don't like the bull crap on it. I don't like it. I've been out there 30 some years and I don't like the bull crap on it. I'm sick and tired of the argument and the talking crazy. So I just take my CB and I turn it down where I can still hear. But it saves you. It will save you, okay? Uh, saw something that really disappointed me, but I couldn't get to it in time. Uh, <clears throat> I went in and bag checked in, came out, bagged in the door. It's me, a truck beside me, a space, and a truck beside another guy. I'm sitting here, and I'm assuming that this guy beside me and the guy on the other side of him between the other door, he was bagging in between those two guys. And I'm like, well, okay, they gonna say so. I can't see because I'm over here on this side of this Peterbilt, but I can see through his windows. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, dude, are y'all gonna stop this guy? 
this guy just bagging up, just bagging up. He had to go in it from a 90 degree. And I'm just sitting there, I'm like, y'all gonna watch? And by the time I grabbed my mic to say, hey, hey, stop, he didn't have a radio. I'm hollering my mic, yo, yo, stop, fella, stop, 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 drop. That's what I'm talking about. You need a radio. So he bagged into this guy's truck. But what got me was, that really disappointed me, was that the driver beside me and the driver on the side of him sat there in that door driver's seat and let that guy bag into him. Didn't blow the horn, didn't do nothing. Just sat there. Ain't no horn been blowing till after hit him. Then he, you know, didn't want to get out and talk crazy. So I got out, I said, man, uh, uh, dude, how you and this guy over here gonna sit in y'all trucks? Peter Bill and a freight liner sat there and watch this man bag and teeth you. Let this man bag and teeth you. Why you didn't hit your horn? Oh man, this ain't got nothing to do with you, man. He just bagged it to my door. You? But the dude, you didn't say nothing. You didn't blow your horn. So I told the police when they got there. I told them the same thing. Both of them sat in their trucks and didn't blow the horn at all. Didn't say nothing. Now, yeah, it's the guy's fault because he should have bagged in, stopped, got out, bagged in, stopped, got out. I don't give a darn, y'all, if it take you 20 times before you hit that dock or hit that spot. Get out that truck and look. Because that's what we're dealing with out here. Low-down drivers. Dealing with low-down drivers want to get some money. Or want to get their truck fixed. That's what we're dealing with out here, y'all. Come on, guys. Ladies. Do your job. Get out and check. If it takes 20 times, get out and check because the guy next to you you don't know what he thinking he ain't your friend he doing the same thing you doing driving the truck he's not your friend so he's not gonna be polite and say hey uh hey man bum, bum, bum. hey man you blowing that's why i said get a radio because when i grabbed my mic to tell him to stop he would have heard me saying stop dog stop stop driving you finna hit the truck but he didn't have a radio You've got to have a radio, people. you got to. So now he's got an accident with the company on his record. It ain't on his driver's license, but it's on his... Well, yeah, it is, because the police came out and took a report. So, yeah. It's going to be on there. See what I'm saying? That's what I'm talking about. It's about me, 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 me. It ain't never about us coming together. That's the reason why the trucking industry is going to be the last industry out here to ever pull together. We don't give a darn about each other. That's the reason why ever since I've been in trucking, I hear, oh, we're going to strike. We're going to shut down. We're going to park the trucks. I said, okay, when are you going to shut them down? Oh, maybe we shutting down such and such, such, such date. I take off that weekend, that week that they shutting down. I, I, I go home. I go home. I sit at home. But do they do it? No. Why? Because these company drivers going to keep running. The own operators, they're going to get out here wanting to do it. But the company drivers going to keep running. Why? Because they don't want to lose their job. They don't want to lose their job. They don't know that <clears throat> if every trucking driver shut down out here, these trucking companies ain't going to fire you. They can't fire you. They'll have to close the doors. <laughs> they would have to close the doors, man. Yes, they would have to close the doors in order to move all these trucks. If every truck just shut down, these companies will not fire you. But what's going to happen, these companies going to get on the phone and start calling up to Washington. Hey, man, y'all know what the heck y'all going to do, man. I can't buy my wife no mink coat. I can't buy my wife this Lamborghini. I can't buy her this Maserati because my trucks ain't moving. What y'all going to do, man? What are y'all going to do? That's the only way you're going to get this issue fixed. We're going to have to pull together. Look at the pilots. When the planes ain't flying, ain't nobody going nowhere. They can't just feel no planes to get pilots out there. No. That's where they start using these buses. <laughs> so uh, that's just things that we would never do is stick together as drivers because we feel that I'm better than you, you better than me. And the key, and the new people coming out of school, oh man, those the new, those the rookies, man. I ain't studying them, man. He got his CDLs like me. He can do his own job, man. I ain't studying that rookie. Now, let me let me say this. There are situations where you try to give help. And then they want to snap. Man, I got this, man. Oh, man, I got it. I don't need no help. Okay, boom. When they start talking like that, step back. Step back and let them do what they're going to do. You know, if they mess up, hey, you offer to help. Hey, 
I give you a reward. You done your job. You done your good deed for the day because you offered to him. If they hit that vehicle, hit that truck or trailer, hey, it ain't got nothing to do with you. You offer to him. But if you sit there and see them doing it and you don't offer to him, that to me that's a that's like you just want it to happen, man. I don't think it's fair. I don't think that's fair. I really don't. Man, I went and got me some coffee, man. It's still some coffee on the floor. And it's messing me up right now, man. I better clean my coffee up, man. I don't like that. But anyway, uh, well, I can show y'all my new truck, did it, and everything. Yeah, they, uh, I got a new truck. Uh, think about Avery. Uh, uh, after you do your time, you come back. If you hadn't been gone, I think for ten years, you can come back. You get your seniority back and everything. And uh, and I thank God for that. I did get my seniority back. Uh, uh, upgraded to a newer truck. I have no issues with it. It's a 2024 Freightliner. Matter of fact, here's some pictures of it. Hold on. So there you have it, 2024, man. Got the table and stuff in it, but I keep the bed folded down. Sometimes I fold it up and set the chairs up and everything. But other than that, it's, uh, they took the peanut butter out and made it all black. The beige, they took that out. And now it's all black and stuff and everything inside. The interior stuff is all black. But uh, other than that, hey, it is what it is. But like I said, y'all, we have got to start looking out for each other. But, uh, oh, and do me a favor to my drivers out here. If you get to a truck stop at the last minute, you you get to the truck stop at the last minute and um, you park somewhere and you block somebody in, don't wake up with a freaking attitude. Please don't do that. Don't wake up with no freaking attitude. Just get up and move the truck. Uh, this morning, a uh, guy wanted to get out, and I was on my way to get some coffee. The guy, lightning knocked on the door. I said, man, they parking everywhere in this camp, ain't they? He said, yeah, but they don't, don't make sense. And the guy got up and went to, man, what the hell? What you knocking on my door for, man? Well, Doc, I need to get out. Man, what, where you at? I'm like, why are you? I'm like, are you serious? <laughs> you go talk crazy, and you block it. You park in the no parking zone. So... Uh, you got to start park stopping a little bit early, guys. Uh, I was in several truck stops. I was in Dan, Dan's. Uh, I noticed about 8 o'clock, 7 o'clock. I got there at 7. It started filling up. Um, I passed uh, the Loves on 49. It had some spots in there. So I said about 7.30, 8, about 8 o'clock, everything's going to be full. So you need to stop before 8 o'clock. Just go ahead on and stop. If you're not going to stop, don't get upset and don't get mad when somebody knock on your door at 4 5 in the morning because they set their time to pull off. Don't get mad because they ready to roll, okay? Don't get mad because they ready to roll. Man, you, you know this. You know this because they're going to wake you up because they need a spot to park. So come on, guys. Be professional. Stop getting the attitude. Just wake up and say, okay, man, give me a minute. Can you give me, let me get my shoes on. All right. Because you knew that. All right. Stop backing the food. Stop backing the food. Another beef I got with my drivers out here is, in which some people ain't going to agree with this one, but hey, I'm going to talk about it anyway. Checking in at the shipper or the receiver. You done drove all night. You got there. You done drove all day. You got there. You stayed all night at this location. Everybody else said, man, I'm going to the truck stop. I ain't staying there. And, uh, you stayed there all night, drivers come in and uh, jump in front of you and go check in and let you know they're getting in the door. It happened to me this right here this morning. Uh, this guy pulled in and I was already here or nobody here but me. And uh, he come in and went in there and jumped in front of me. I'm like, okay, no problem, dude. It's just the two of us, man. He's in a day cab, which you probably saw in the video total when I flipped it around. Uh, so it don't matter about that. He's a city driver, but it's all good. But um, be polite, you know. Uh, what I normally do is the day when they open up, if I'm there and there's somebody there before me, I'll blow the horn. I pump, pump, blow up on the air horn. That way to wake him up and let him know, hey, going in to check in, Doc. And then he'll look out the curtain and I'll point and check in. And if he say, okay, I'll just say, all right, I'll go in and check in. 
but if he's up, let him go get in front. You know, I have walked in the place to pick the check in and I sign on the second line and says a drive right there in front of me. So I'm going to sign up under him. And she said, no, you the first one in. I said, yeah, I know, but he, he was here all night. We're not pulled in. That's just polite, man. That's just being professional about it, you know. But I know a lot of y'all ain't going to agree with that. Sure. If he don't wake up, he on his own. And she sure. ain't got time to wait on him. I understand. I understand. But uh, professionalism goes a long way. Professional goes a long way and everything. But, man, I can sit here all day and talk to y'all while I wait to get loaded. But, uh. I'm going to bring this one to an end and everything. The whole objective to it is respect your fellow driver. Respect your fellow drivers out here on this road, guys. Please, no matter what color, race, creed, male, female, it do not matter. We've got to start respecting. Once we get the respect down for each other, oh, man, it's a start. It's a step toward a higher and powerful team once we do that. Okay, I'm not perfect at all, y'all. I'm not. I have my fault, but I know where my health and strength comes from, from the good Lord. And I I try to live a Christian life, but hey, I, I, I get upset sometimes, you know. I still remember when people keep bringing it up when I went off about my trailer getting broke into, you know. <laughs> but I was, a, I was a lease driver then, man, you know. So that's pissing me off, man, you know. Uh, time consuming. That load was headed to Dallas, man. I was going to see my baby boy in Dallas and stuff, man, but shoot, boy, that pissed me off that day, but uh, that's another topic, we talk about that later, oh, and let me let me put this out, if you're coming to Memphis, Tennessee, okay, guys, go get your lock, go on Amazon, order Big Red, I got Big Red, I still got Big Red, but I also got this one here now, uh, Big Red had a, uh, where you put your key in, you know, they don't have, they didn't have a cover over the one I had when I first told y'all about the big red lock. I went and got this one now, and the thing about it is, uh, it's got this little cap that goes over, you screws it, you screw on, and it protects the lock from water, ice, moisture, stuff like that in the wintertime, and you can just screw it back on, and it keeps it from getting water in it and stuff, so to keep that lock from freezing, so this here's it's pretty good. If they want it, get in the trailer, they'll get in it. They can get in. I don't care if Big Red is on it or Little Boy here was on it. This is Little Boy. Uh, it's good. It's tough. It's steady. It's durable. Uh, I got it off Amazon and everything. Uh, I had one issue I had with it was when I got it, these bars, you see it still kind of spread it out a little, little far. I had to knock this, take a sledgehammer and put it on the ground and knock it down some to make it even. As you can see, it's still kind of up a little bit. I'm going to need to knock it down some more. Yeah, but it fits around there. It fits around there just as good as they and everything. But uh, all I got to do is take a sledgehammer and hit it and knock it down a little bit more. I'm sure you can see it in the video how this one is here and this one got that little angle to it. I just need to knock it down some more. That's all. But it fits around there great. Fits around and secure the door. You know, um, I put it on every load uh, because once you got to remember, once you sign that paperwork, hey, your name on that load just as well as your company name. Okay, so secure your loads, whatever you do. Secure every load you pull. And stuff. But I know this ain't going to stop them. It won't stop them, but it'll slow them down some, you know, and everything. But the biggest thing out here is remember one thing. There is no load out here more important than your life. If they want that door and load, let them have it. That's what your company got insurance for. That's what the shipper that shipping that load got insurance for. They pay insurance. No load out here is more important than that. Okay, no matter how you protect it with this. Or this. I put this on, I put this on. That's two protections. That's the reason why. Uh, but it's no load out here more important than that. Okay? Give it to them. Let them have it. Let them do what they're going to do. Call the police. Call the company. And you're done. But you can try to slow them down with the lock and the brace. Um, 
Um, don't uh, don't risk your life. I had a good friend of mine with a uh, night refrigerated, turned around, had a pharmaceutical, went to Atlanta somewhere, parked, he didn't bag all the way to the dock, turned around about two, three in the morning, he felt the trailer moving, so he was thinking it was them back to unload, but he forgot he didn't bag to the dock. When he got out to go back there, they beat him up pretty bad for some doing Q-tips and cotton balls. Q-tips and cotton balls, because they thought it was, they knew it was a place that gets in needles and stuff like that. So that's what they probably thought it was, but it was Q-tips and cotton balls, and he got beat up pretty bad over freaking Q-tip and cotton balls. But anyway, like I said, there's no load out here more important in your life, so don't try to be a superhero. Slow them down, but don't try to be a hero out here, okay? This is your boy, Scooby-Doo. Be careful, be safe. Love each and every last one of you all. To my boy, Tachon, to my boy, Micah Dunning. Hey, y'all boys better straighten it up before I have to get that belt on y'all boys, man. I'm about to get that belt on y'all guys. But uh, uh, to my partner, Micah Pratt, you tell mama I said happy Valentine's Time Day, Michael Pratt, and everything. Uh, but uh, to each and every one, be careful, be safe. Once again, I said all my videos, keep the good Lord with you in everything you do and everything you say. And once again, to JJ and Stanley House, thank you all guys again. That makes me feel good when somebody walk up to me and don't want to beat me up, but want to Tell me, thank you. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta stay on my guard, on my guard, there, guys. I gotta keep my, keep my guard up, man, because I don't know if somebody wanna walk up to me and wanna take me out, man. So, uh, <laughs> I gotta watch it, gotta watch it. But uh, thank you all once again. Y'all be careful, be safe. It's a beautiful day today. It's kind of chilly down here, but we picking up this load. We are gonna take it to Bessemer, Alabama, to our drop yard. We are gonna give it to another guy. Uh, he's gonna pick it up out of the drop yard. You all saw the Bessemer yard. Uh, we're going to take it in there, and uh, I grab me a shower over there and pick up my next load and get ready to head to the house and stuff and everything. And this one is going up to Elkton, Elkton, Virginia. Elkton, Virginia. All right. Y'all be careful. Be safe. Love you. Thank God for each and every one of you all. Continue to keep scooping, doing my wife in your prayers. We'll do the same for each and every one of you all. We love you. We thank God for you. I know this has been a long video, but hey, your boy Scoob is back. I'll be back tomorrow with another video. So, Come on back and join your boy Scoob. I'm going I'm to I'm 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 get some videos. <laughs> I'm going to get these videos up and going, y'all. But uh, I love you. I thank God for each and every one of my brothers, my sisters out here. Thank God for you. And may the Lord continue to bless you and your family. Peace and love and prosperity from your boy Scoob and Mr. and Mrs. Scooby Do. We love you. We thank God for you. Guys, if you ain't called your wife or your girlfriend, your significant others, ladies, if you had not called your boyfriend or your significant other, get your butt up, get on the phone, give them a call, wish them a happy Valentine's Day, and let them know how much you love them. You know I me, mean? my wife don't like flowers too much, but hey, I don't know, I might sit here and call the florist and deliver a dozen of red roses to, what's that old saying? Just because your boy's school. <laughs> but y'all be careful, we'll talk to you later on, man. Scooby-Doo.